So I want to take a, a left-hand turn, okay, um, which is appropriate because there's a couple of things. You and I talked a little bit kind of in the, in the pre-show about this. My two kids uh, are lefties, uh, and I coach them. Uh, one is actually playing college tennis for me right now. Um, you're a lefty. Um, let's take a little deeper dive into lefties and your take on coaches and, um, you know, coaching a lefty and maybe I'm not a lefty. Is it, talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah. So I'm very lefty. Like I used to always joke about how like you could cut my right arm off and it'd be fine. I mean, other than the ball toss would have been a struggle, but, um, so I grew up without any lefties around me. And, you know, as all lefties I feel like do is you adapt, you watch a righty do something if you're, if you're a visual person and you try to, you try to copy it. Um, you know, I was talking to Bob Litwin about this the other day at, at dinner, you know, and it, the first thing he said, oh my gosh, remember in school the scissors, like the, the lefty scissors, and that's, I talk about it all the time, any lefties out there, anyone that's lefty, please tell me in the chat box, but like those lefty scissors never could cut anything, you couldn't cut anything with these cr crappy scissors so right. the one thing I do do righty is I use scissors right-handed because there's the lefty scissors I don't know if they wanted to purposely sabotage us or what but they like made them the dullest scissors in the world so um and then um you know going back to Tony Palafox a little bit like you know he coached McNair that's kind of his thing his, his claim to fame and I recently spoke with him about what is it like, what was it like for you to coach a lefty? You know, John, how'd you learn? How'd you uh, figure it out? Um, how'd you help John? You're right-handed. And, and so uh, that's Tony there, by the way, in his younger days. And so I have a really quick teaser uh, audio clip. He's tough to understand with his little cute Mexican accent, and the, video, the audio's not great, but we, we put some words to it. But this is a little... I play every day for four months. Every day for four months, two hours each time playing at the resort label. Used to, I got used to how they hit the ball and what they can do, and, and that was what I will get when, 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 when I hit, hit the ball to the back and all, or what he will do with my first shot. So for that time, we play two hours every day. Of course, he couldn't beat me at that time, in 1958. You, I had to concentrate as a left-hander when I was teaching you or, or teaching Matthew, not as a right-hander. So that's just a little um, sneak peek of an interview I did with Tony in the last month about lefties. Um, I, I think what I learned and, and, and seeing all these online courses and just reflecting on it, I was like, you know, there's nothing out there for left-handed players, you know, and, and I played kind of semi-pro golf. And when I started that in 2000, there were like two golf clubs left-handed that I could demo. And there were like a thousand right-handed demos. And I'm like, you know, I just had to figure it out. So um, I decided that you'd be great to maybe do a course called left in and it's to teach lefties to be use their leftiness and to help really help coaches coach left-handed players because in the research I've been doing there's a really distinct again generalization but there is a distinct kind of typical answer you get like Judy Murray's talking about Andy and Jamie Murray and how you know Jamie's always trying Jamie by the way is left-handed for anyone that doesn't know and he's growing up, always want to hit flashy shots and drop shots and be, be Mr. Cool Dude. And Andy's just like grinding and like hoping the guy misses. That was what Judy said. So there's a distinct difference in their personalities. And obviously that's also not just being left-handed, but again, if you reflect on the lefties, you can think about in sport and even in arts and, and, and theater. And there's a, they, they tend to be known for a little bit more creativity and, and a little bit more flair, I guess. So we, I decided, you know, well, why, there's nothing out there, so why not have a course that's specific to left-handed players, left-handed coaches, helping coaches understand lefties, and then I hit the gold mine, you know, thinking about Tony and, and 
managing to get him to give me an interview on his experience. And a lot of it, as you saw a little clip, has to do with his experience training with Rod Laver for four months. I didn't even know this till a few weeks ago when I talked to him. I'm like, what? Like, you trained with Laver? Like, where? how did I miss this in the 30 years I've known you? So um, he's going to be a lot more involved in, in or there's going to be a lot more audio about his experience of coaching John and what he learned and how that helped him coach John. And, you know, hopefully this can, you know, lefties get, get a little bit of their own thing that we've never gotten before. We're always, you know, the 10%. Well, I'm trying to give lefties a, a little bit more street cred and, 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 um, and maybe again, for real though, helping coaches because lefties think a little bit differently. I think I see the court a little bit differently. I don't know what your experience is coaching Will, but do you feel like he has that leftiness in terms of sometimes the kind of decisions he makes and that's what, what do you, how do you feel about it? You know, that was, that was going to be one of my questions to you is how, how could I be a better coach for him? Uh, you know, being his coach growing up uh, as a kid and then uh, he was different than, than Blakely, uh, both lefties only two lefties in our family for a hundred years, any direction. Uh, and now coaching him in college, I've never felt like he's learned to use his leftiness still. Now he, he does it better now, but that's the one thing when, when I do get the chance uh, to coach other lefties and there only been a, a few other than my kids, but that was the one thing that I, I felt like uh, you can tell that player that knows how to use their leftiness uh, and Coach uh, Tom Gorman would say it all the time. Um, uh, he would say, "Use your leftiness all the time," and and that's one of the things I think that players don't do. And I want to be able to kind of bring that out. And I've never been able to bring that out in Willie. Yeah, I mean, I, one thing that's going to be really fun about this course that we're finishing up is a lot of kind of lefty drills. I mean, of course you can use them with righties, but it seems to be certain sort of drills and games that lefties really gravitate towards. Um, I learned one the other day. I can't even remember. It's cross court animal. I think it's called. And basically instead of just hitting cross court, which I found really tough to stay motivated and focus is every time you miss a certain, if you miss long, you move a cone one foot this way. And so widens the court for, for you, for your, opponent and it makes it more competitive but you're still getting a lot of cross court reps in so right. one game that some of these coaches might know double tap I, I learned that at Rick Macy's a million years ago when I was a kid and I mean it's basically like volleyball you can tap it once to your teammate mini tennis but you can't hit anything hard so you don't have to tap it you can hit it over straight if you want or you can pass it to your teammate and it's all touch and stuff and if you get four players out there that understand it it's like cutthroat I could play it for 10 hours in a row. Not anymore. I'd be dead, but like back in the day. So um, hopefully this, this video uh, or this online course will, will be fun for, for lefties to, to give a go and coaches to maybe help understand. But I do think the lefties often have a little bit different mindset and they're, we're looser. We're not as fun. Like, you know, I don't think you see many lefties up at net, like with their racket straight up here. They're a little bit over here, a little bit low, you know, always the, the coach saying, get your racket up. You know, right. but, um, I think so. part of it is just kind of learning, accepting some of the, the differences as opposed to trying to change them. And I think Tony Palafox might be the biggest genius at that. He, to me, in terms of, I'm going to see what you do well. And even if you hit, if you hit, super off your grip of your racket, I'm not going to change it. I'm going to just make it, I'm just going to work on it and make it even better. I mean, that's a, a bit extreme, but right. he didn't want to just say, he didn't want everyone to work with him. And five years later, everyone looked exactly the same. He really wanted to work with your individualness, individualness. Is that a word? Right. Uh, it is. Individuality. <laughs> I went to Georgia. What are you going to do? <laughs> but, um, and, and really like, build on your individuality rather than, than, than squash it and make you be like everybody else. And I think that's where the leftiness, my player, I only had her one semester, my first school, I started teaching her that lefty wide serve. I mean, she could cut a lefty ad serve wide, like four feet from the net. And I mean, and just people were like tripping over their feet. I mean, right. was, and she, like, she loved it. Like, she was a senior. She's like, darn, I wish I knew this sooner. <laughs> Well, so a little known fact, um, actually, well, two, two little known facts. Uh, your dad is a movie star, right? <laughs> he and likes then, it, we'll, we'll dive into that in a second, but, but also you played some professional golf. I mean, semi pro. I did get into one LPGA, um, but no, I so, wouldn't. 
So, so the question is, what did you learn from golf that you've used in tennis? Or did you learn anything from golf that you've used and translated over? Actually, like, in coaching, because in golf, like, you know, um, there, there are obviously similarities, and a lot of tennis players tend to be pretty decent golfers. And, and so, but I think it was really more about um, mindset. Okay. Um, in tennis, the ball's moving. You have to swing when the ball gets there obviously so in golf you could stand over a ball which feels like for 10 minutes and think about all the things you can do wrong and 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 often when you do that they do go wrong um so really learning how to compartmentalize and you know i studied i was older at 27 is when i started golf so i was a little bit smarter and more willing to you know practice properly and, and not waste time and learn from the people that were better and i knew for me like to go out and focus for five hours straight was not realistic. So I learned how to compartmentalize. And another interesting thing, I always felt like, okay, when I golf, I'm going to do everything right. I'm going to get to the practice hour before I'm going to hit 20 minutes of wedges, 20 minutes of irons, blah, whatever. And I found that I played pretty average. And my coach, who was great, thankfully I got very lucky with my golf coach. He's like, the, your personality, that's not going to work. You don't have to be there for an hour. Just get out there, feel good. If you hit 20 balls, great. If you hit 200, and that's sort of how when I was at my best in tennis, you know, it's hard. College sometimes is more structured and everyone has to do the same warm up. But I, I was given a little bit of leeway at some point to do what I needed to do. And I think that's another thing with coaching. If you can, it's hard to do with bigger groups, but allow the individuality in terms of like, I always needed to hit returns last thing I did before we started matches. I, I just, if I felt good about my return, then everything felt better. So, Try to try to layer that in if you can.